The Eliani didn't stand a chance once humanity's war beasts scented blood on the alien wind. Jordan Reyes, a battle-scarred human soldier, stood shackled before the Eliani Tribunal, charged with unspeakable war crimes. Judge Boron, a towering insectoid monster, clicked his gleaming black mandibles as he listed the atrocities. Over a million dead, entire hive cities collapsed into rubble, Eliani bodies crushed or blasted apart, all because of the bioweapons Jordan had unleashed. The war beast, Boron hissed, compound eyes glittering with hatred. Your species' most forbidden creation. Abominations grown in the darkest human labs, gene-spliced nightmares made for one purpose. Slaughter. Jordan met the alien's gaze unblinking. We had no choice. Your kind started this war, invading our colony, bombarding our cities, sending your soldiers to butcher our civilians. You forced our hand. The insectoid judge silenced him with a snap of serrated claws. Your colony was an illegal encroachment on the sovereign territory of the Eliani. This moon belongs to us. We were within our rights to exterminate your infestation and reclaim what was ours. A bitter smile twisted Jordan's lips. The pompous bug had no idea. No idea what he and his brothers in arms had endured in those early, horrific days of the invasion. How they'd watched the Eliani warships darken the skies, disgorging hordes of chittering monsters armed to the teeth. The wind howled across New Eden's barren surface as Jordan Reyes marched along the perimeter fence, his assault rifle tight against his shoulder. He swept the weapon's sights back and forth, searching for any hint of movement. Dry brush rustled, rocks clattered down distant hills, but no threats emerged from the alien terrain. Reyes, report! Captain Singh's voice crackled over the radio. Anything unusual on your patrol? Jordan reached up to key his mic. Thought I saw some movement about a click-out, sir, requesting permission to investigate. Negative, Reyes. Probably just local wildlife. Finish your circuit and return to base. Roger that. Jordan frowned but followed orders. Singh and the others always dismissed his concerns, treating him like some paranoid grunt jumping at shadows. He knew better. This place wasn't safe. Never would be, no matter how many fences they erected or how many guns they carried. Jordan was halfway back to the main gate when the first shells hit. The ground shook. Flames roared up from shattered buildings. Sirens blared. He sprinted for cover as Eliani dropships screamed overhead, disgorging insectoid warriors by the dozens. They swarmed into the colony, plasma rifles spitting blue bolts of death. Jordan dove into a crater, cursing as he slammed a fresh magazine into his rifle. He popped up to snap off bursts at the nearest aliens. Their carapaces shattered. Green ichor splattered, but more kept coming, scuttling over the bodies of the fallen. All around him, humans died. Scientists, doctors, the people he was supposed to protect. Jordan glimpsed his wife Mara herding a group of children toward the shelters. An Eliani warrior bore down on her, scythe-like blades slashing. She shoved a young boy out of the way. The alien's talons pierced her chest in a spray of crimson. No! Jordan surged to his feet, his rifle roaring. The Eliani's head exploded but it was too late. Mara crumpled, eyes wide and unseeing. Their son Danny wailed in terror, tiny hands shaking her still form. Jordan fought through the grief, cutting down aliens left and right, but the colony's defenses crumpled like paper. Within minutes, the Eliani controlled the surface. The few remaining survivors fell back to a reinforced bunker near the research labs. Jordan stumbled in to find a half-dozen scientists arguing with the security chief. We have to use them, Dr. Halsey yelled, stabbing a finger at a sealed door. It's our only chance. Are you insane? We can't control those things. It's too risky. Jordan shouldered past them. What's behind that door? What are you talking about? Halsey met his gaze, her face grim. The war beasts. We engineered them to be the ultimate soldiers. Stronger, faster... More savage than anything else, but highly unpredictable. Gunfire and inhuman screeches echoed from the corridor. The Eliani were breaking through. Jordan heard human screams abruptly cut short. He grabbed Halsey. 
Open the door, unleash them, all of them. But... Do it! She punched in the code with shaking fingers. The door slid open. Snarls and howls rolled out, chilling Jordan to the bone. Nightmares paced in the shadows, eyes glowing with feral hunger. The first Eliani warrior skittered into the room, mandibles clacking. A dark shape pounced, bearing it to the floor in a flurry of fangs and claws. The alien's dying shrieks echoed off the walls. Jordan stared at the war beasts, watching them tear into the Eliani with horrifying savagery. He wondered if he had just doomed them all. But as more of the creatures surged out to meet the aliens in battle, he felt a grim satisfaction. The Eliani wanted war, and now, now they would learn the true fury humankind could unleash. The wails of the dying and the triumphant howls of the war beasts filled the air as the nightmare creatures rampaged through the Eliani capital. Packs of the beasts broke through the barricaded doors of government buildings, shredding the insectoid politicians within. Eliani warriors fired their weapons at the war beasts, plasma bolts sizzling against thick hides, but the beasts shrugged off the blasts, pouncing on the aliens and tearing them apart with razor claws. Jordan charged down the rubble-choked streets alongside a squad of human soldiers, taking advantage of the chaos sown by their unleashed creations. He fired concentrated bursts from his rifle, dropping Eliani left and right. The aliens were in full retreat now, their forces scattered and broken. Forward, don't let up, Jordan roared to his men. They advanced through clouds of choking smoke and dust, shooting any Eliani who dared stand their ground. War beasts bounded past them, bloody fangs flashing as they chased down fleeing aliens. In a matter of hours, the once gleaming spires of the Eliani capital had been reduced to shattered ruins. The streets ran with rivers of green ichor. Countless insectoid corpses lay strewn about, rent and broken. The few surviving Eliani fled to their ships, desperate to escape the horror their kind had unleashed. Jordan finally called a halt in what had once been a grand plaza. He stood atop a pile of rubble, his armor splattered with alien blood, watching the war beasts prowl amongst the devastation. The creatures growled and snapped at each other, reveling in the slaughter. We did it, Sergeant Hawkins said, eyes wide with a kind of shocked awe. We actually beat them. Jordan nodded grimly. The Eliani had been routed their mighty war machine reduced to tatters. But he knew this was only the beginning. The bugs would be back, with new weapons and strategies. They would stop at nothing to avenge this defeat. And the war beasts? What would happen when there were no more aliens to kill? How long before they turned on their creators? Jordan shook off those dark thoughts. They'd won the day, driven the invaders from human space. He intended to savor this victory. One of the war beasts padded up to him, its muzzle drenched in green gore. The creature regarded him with cold, feral eyes, predator sizing up predator. Jordan met that gaze unflinchingly. He reached out a hand slowly, palm up. The war beast sniffed at it, hot breath gusting across his fingers. Then, to his shock, it pushed its head against his touch, rumbling deep in its throat. A strange sense of kinship settled over Jordan. Man and beast united by the primal thrill of the hunt, the rush of blood and death. In that moment, he knew the war beasts would fight for humanity, so long as there were enemies to kill, and he would lead them to whatever end. The stench of death blanketed the ruined Eleani capital. Corpses of the insectoid aliens lay strewn across the rubble, their carapaces cracked open, ichor pooling beneath them. Packs of war beasts prowled through the devastation, sniffing for any survivors to rend and tear. Jordan picked his way through the carnage, his boots squelching in the muck. He clutched his rifle tight, eyes scanning for threats. Around him, the remnants of the human forces regrouped, tending to the wounded and counting the dead. Reyes, Sergeant Hawkins called out. You better come see this. Jordan hurried over to where Hawkins crouched beside the massive corpse of a fallen war beast. His heart clenched at the sight. The creature's hide was perforated with dozens of plasma burns, its lifeblood staining the ground. How many did we lose? he asked, voice rough. At least half, 
Hawkins replied grimly. Probably more. The Eliani they... they adapted. Started using some kind of sonic weapons, scrambled the war beast's senses, drove them mad. Jordan cursed under his breath. The bugs were clever, he'd give them that. They wouldn't underestimate the war beasts again. He looked out over the battered human survivors, barely a hundred left out of the thousands they'd brought to Elia, and Earth. Earth would never take them back, not after what they'd done, what he'd done. We can't stay here, he said at last. The Eliani will regroup, come back stronger than ever. We need to find somewhere safe, somewhere we can rebuild. Hawkins frowned. Where? The bugs control half the damn galaxy. We've got nowhere to go. Jordan turned to Dr. Halsey, who knelt nearby, tending to a wounded soldier. Doc, those star charts you showed me? That planet on the edge of Eliani space? Tell me about it. Halsey looked up, her face streaked with grime. It's called Zephyr, uninhabited as far as we know, but the probes detected ruins on the surface, structures that predate the Eliani by millennia. Then that's where we're going, Jordan decided. Gather the survivors, salvage what gear you can. We leave at first light. As the soldiers rushed to prepare, Jordan approached one of the surviving war beasts. The creature growled low in its throat, but didn't attack. He placed a hand on its blood-matted hide. I know you didn't ask for this, he murmured, but I need you to keep fighting for all our sakes. The war beast rumbled in response as if it understood. Jordan took that as a yes. He turned to survey the ruins one last time. The Eleani would pay for what they'd done to him, to his family, to his entire species. He would build a new home on Zephyr, a new army, and when the time was right he would bring the fury of the war beasts down upon the bugs once more. The journey to Zephyr was long and harrowing. Jordan stood on the bridge of the salvaged Eleani transport, watching the stars blur past, the ship shuddered and groaned around him, barely holding together. They'd stripped it of weapons and crammed it full of supplies, wounded soldiers, and stasis-bound war beasts. Exiting warp in five, the pilot called out, brace for transition. The ship jolted as it dropped back into real space. Alarms blared. Jordan gripped the console to keep from falling. Report, he barked. We're in orbit around Zephyr the pilot replied, hands flying over the controls. But the engines are shot. We'll have to land manually. Jordan stared out the forward viewscreen at the planet below. Swirls of white clouds marbled its blue-green surface. It looked pristine, peaceful. But he knew better than to trust appearances. Take us down, he ordered, and pray this crate holds together long enough to reach the ground. The ship plummeted through the atmosphere, Hull glowing red-hot. Jordan braced himself as the ground rushed up to meet them. At the last moment, the pilot wrenched back on the controls, leveling them out. The ship hit the surface with a teeth-rattling jolt, skidding and bouncing across an open plain, before finally grinding to a halt. Jordan picked himself up, ears ringing. He staggered to the airlock and punched the release. The ramp lowered with a hiss, letting in a gust of cool, clean air. He stepped out onto the surface of Zephyr, squinting in the bright sunlight. Around him the survivors emerged from the ship, looking around in awe and trepidation. "'Welcome home,' Jordan said grimly. "'Let's get to work.' They established a base camp near the wreckage of the ship, setting up prefabricated shelters and perimeter defences. Jordan oversaw the unloading of the supplies and the release of the war beasts from their stasis pods. Dr. Halsey came to him as he watched the creatures prowl the edges of the camp. We lost a few more on the way here, she said softly. Stasis failure. But I managed to preserve their genetic material. We can grow a new generation, given time. Jordan nodded. Do it, and see if you can improve on the original design. We're going to need every advantage we can get. As the days turned into weeks, they began to explore their new world. They discovered rich veins of minerals, lush forests teeming with game, and vast oceans filled with edible fish. But always, they searched for the ruins Dr. Halsey had spoken of. It was Sergeant Hawkins who found them first. 
he came running into camp, his face flushed with excitement. Reyes, you have to see this. Jordan followed him up on a vast plateau, covering miles in each direction, and there, rising from the center, was a towering structure of gleaming metal and smooth stone. It was clearly not of Eliani design. The architecture was too flowing, too organic. It seemed to grow out of the ground itself, spiraling upwards in impossible curves. What the hell is this? Jordan breathed. I don't know, Hawkins replied, but I think we just found the key to beating the bugs once and for all. Jordan approached the structure cautiously, the war beasts prowling at his heels. He laid a hand on the cool metal, marveling at the intricate patterns carved into its surface. Whoever had built this had been far more advanced than the Eliani, than humanity. If he could unlock its secrets... A slow smile spread across Jordan's face. For the first time since the fall of New Eden, he felt something like hope stir in his chest. The Eliani had no idea what was coming for them. Years turned into decades on humanity's remote refuge world. Under Jordan's leadership, the survivors rebuilt, harnessing the knowledge gleaned from the ancient ruins. The war beasts thrived in Zephyr's harsh environs, each generation more cunning and deadly than the last. Dr. Halsey used the alien technology to accelerate their evolution, crafting creatures that blurred the line between beast and machine. As the colony's defences grew, so too did Jordan's determination to bring the fight back to the Iliani. He spent long hours in the ruins' vast databanks, studying the star maps and deciphering the secrets of the long-vanished race. With each passing year, he felt the weight of time pressing down on him, knowing that the Iliani were out there, plotting their revenge. Then, on a clear morning, the sky above Zephyr split open. A massive Eleani fleet surged into orbit, their ships bristling with strange new weapons. Alarms blared across the colony as soldiers scrambled to their battle stations. Jordan raced to the command center, his heart pounding. On the main view screen, a familiar insectoid face leered down at him, Judge Boron, his carapace now adorned with the regalia of a war leader. This time you will not escape judgment, the Eliani rasped. This time your abominations will not save you. Jordan felt a cold rage settle over him. He thought of all the friends and comrades he'd lost, all the sacrifices they'd made. You're welcome to try, you overgrown cockroach, he snarled. But I promise, it will be the last mistake you ever make. He cut the transmission and turned to his assembled officers. You all know the plan. Hold the perimeter, buy me time to get to the ruins. Today, we end this, once and for all. As the first Eliani dropships hammered through the atmosphere, Jordan headed for the stables. His personal war beast, a monstrous creature he'd raised from a hatchling, waited for him. The beast lowered its massive head, rumbling deep in its throat, as Jordan climbed onto the saddle fused to its armoured hide. One last ride, old friend, he murmured, patting its neck. Let's give them hell. They charged out to meet the invaders head-on, plasma bolts sizzling past them. Jordan unleashed a battle cry as his war beast slammed into the Eliani lines, scattering the insectoid warriors like leaves in a gale. His pulse rifle bucked in his hands, each shot finding its mark in chitinous flesh. But the Eliani had come prepared. Their weapons fired searing beams of coherent light, that punched through Warbeast hide like paper. Jordan watched in horror as his mount stumbled, half its head shorn away. He leapt clear as the beast collapsed, rolling to his feet and sprinting for the ruins. All around him, the battle raged. Humans and Warbeasts clashed with Eliani in a churning melee, blood and ichor staining the ground. Jordan blocked out the screams of the dying, forcing himself to focus on his goal. He had to reach the doomsday device the ancients had left behind, the one weapon that could end this, once and for all. As he neared the ruin's entrance, a shadow fell over him. He looked up to see Judge Boron descending from a dropship on a pillar of crackling energy, flanked by a squad of elite guards. "'Your time has come, Jordan Reyes,' the Eliani leader hissed, raising a glowing blade. "'Face your judgment!' Jordan dove aside as the blade slashed down, feeling its searing heat blister his skin. He came up firing, his shots sparking off Boron's shields. 
The Eliani laughed, a rasping, clicking sound that sent chills down Jordan's spine. Your primitive weapons are useless, Boron taunted, advancing. Surrender, and I promise your death will be swift. Jordan backed away, his mind racing. He couldn't beat Boron in a straight fight, but maybe he didn't have to. He turned and sprinted into the ruins, hearing the Eliani's furious shouts behind him. He raced down twisting corridors, leaping over piles of rubble, always keeping just ahead of his pursuers. To at last he reached the heart of the complex, a vast chamber housing a pulsing orb of eldritch energy, the doomsday device, the ancient's last resort against an unstoppable foe. Jordan slapped a hand onto the activation panel, just as Boron and his guards burst into the chamber. The Alini leader's eyes widened as he saw the device powering up, realizing too late the trap he'd walked into. No! Boron screamed, lunging forward, but it was too late. The device unleashed a blinding pulse of energy, a shockwave that rippled out across the planet's surface. It tore through the Eliani ships in orbit, shredding their hulls like tissue paper. It swept over the battlefield, turning Eliani warriors to ash where they stood. And it ripped through the chamber, shattering stone and metal alike. Jordan felt it slam into him, burning, searing, shredding. He screamed as his flesh blistered and peeled, as his bones cracked and splintered. But even through the agony he felt a fierce, savage joy. He had done it. He had ended the war once and for all. As his life ebbed away, he dragged himself to the chamber's entrance, gazing out over the battlefield. The Eliani fleet was in ruins, their ships burning in the sky. The surviving war beasts and human soldiers surged forward, overwhelming the last pockets of resistance. A smile tugged at Jordan's cracked, bleeding lips. He had given everything to secure humanity's future among the stars, his life, his family, his very soul. But as the darkness closed in, he knew it had been worth it. The war beasts would carry on his legacy, guarding humanity against any threat, and a new generation of leaders would rise up to take his place, forged in the crucible of this last, desperate war. His final thoughts were of his wife and son, lost so long ago. He hoped they would forgive him for what he had become, for the monster he had unleashed upon the galaxy. Then the light faded and he knew no more. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.